Hey guys, Theron Asbury here with Revital Outdoors bringing you another exciting podcast tonight. We're going back to the state that I have a lot of history, a lot of love for, the state of Arkansas, Woo Pig Suey. Uh, we're going to talk to Mr. Chris Huselton, who actually finished in the uh, check range last year on Lake Hamilton for the BFL Archie Division. And uh, he looks forward to maybe uh, capitalizing on his success this year and maybe even walking away with that first place trophy. So we're looking forward to bringing him in. Uh, for all of you uh, new listeners out there and new followers, be sure you hit that subscribe button on our YouTube page. We're very, very excited for all the subscribers that are tuned into our content. And hitting, it, hitting that uh, subscribe button will get you notified when all of our new content is dropping. And we have a lot of great stuff coming. Also, if you've never heard of Revital Outdoors, be sure to check out our website, www.revitaloutdoors.com. We're a premium CBD company in the outdoor industry. Our products are THC-free, made right here in America. Great for all avid hunters and anglers out there, so be sure to check us out. We have a full line of products. We also are accepting pro staff applications, so hit that pro staff tab, fill out the application. We'll be happy to review that. Check us out on social media. It's going to be Facebook and Instagram. And uh, doing a lot of great things. I'm very, very honored to also be a sponsor to Major League Fishing and the BFL. So uh, without further ado, let's bring him in from Conway, Arkansas this evening, Mr. Chris Huselton. How are you doing this evening, bud? Doing good. Appreciate you having me. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, you've been fishing quite a while. You fish more than just the uh, the BFLs with Major League Fishing. You fish a lot of other stuff. So talk to us about uh, Lake Hamilton, what it means to you, and fishing in the state of Arkansas a little bit. Okay. Uh, I spend a lot of time going to Hamilton uh, during the colder uh, months when usually the lake's either drawn down three or five feet. Um, it's five feet again this year. Uh, so uh, I, I go over there quite a bit on the weekends and uh, fish some small tournaments throughout the winter. And uh, fishing's usually pretty good on Hamilton in the winter. Uh, one thing that'll be different this year compared to last year is uh, last year when we were there, the water was really dirty. Um, this year it's it's pretty clear uh, so that'll be one big difference um, for this year compared to last year uh, setting up for a, a good weather week it's supposed to be in the 60s most of the, most of this week with maybe a little bit of a cool down on on saturday uh, the day of the tournament but uh should warm the water up you know pretty good this week and uh, with the with the clear water you know it opens up the entire water column to being able to fish shallow or or really deep, you know, and you can do both of those things on Lake Hamilton. So it's uh, it's pretty diverse. It's not a huge lake, uh, but it fishes pretty good uh, as far as uh, the amount of fishable water. You know, most I'd say most of the lake is is what I would consider fishable. Uh, whereas you know a lot of the other lakes we go to, you know, certain sections always tend to play, but um, you can catch fish from one end of that lake to the other. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to spread out a little bit on a small lake with uh b being drawn down five feet okay okay well let's break it down a little bit that brings up a lot of interesting things a lot of interesting questions so for the guys that want to target deep are you talking about the flooded timber that's in you know 40 to 80 feet are you talking about um fishing the the deep water uh docks that are relating to the uh, channel swings or something like that well, I'll just, I'll be honest and say right up front, I'm not a very good deep water fisherman. I, I'm more of a shallow water fisherman, but I know that, uh, right on. you know, the things that you mentioned you know, can come into play. Channel swings, deeper brush, uh, deeper timber, deeper docks, you know, A-rigs, uh, football jigs, um, jerk baits, those kind of things will play in the, in the deeper water. And, you know, for the shallower water, it, if you know if it's calm and there's not much wind that's going to be tough with it being real clear um, but you know the the rattle traps square bills medium running crank baits spinner baits chatter baits those will kind of be the the main uh, lures for the for the shallow bite i would think and that's what you like to do is you like to fish shallow yeah i'm more of a shallow guy um i don't even own a, a pan optics or a live scope or anything i've got my 360 and uh i i, I cover i cover water on you know shallow water that's that's what i like to do um and and and, and that's a lake you can catch some fish shallow in the winter um some of these other lakes it's not you know not as easy um but uh you know i think you know you don't have to fish 30 40 feet deep but that will that that will be a bite uh on the lake uh, for this winter it's been really cold uh, we've had some ice uh, in the last few days, um, but it's starting to warm back up. We're going to be on a warming trend, so 
hopefully uh, there'll be some fish to be caught shallow as well. I think there will be, absolutely. And I can tell you um, there's a lot of shallow water anglers that are going to be in this tournament. I'm talking about Spencer Shuffield, Cody Kemp, Shane Stoddard. I've looked up your record. You seem to do very, very well. Um, just looking at your social media uh, as a shallow water guy. Um, so I think you will. Um, let's just talk about it a little bit. Um, without giving away too much information, what kind of baits do you have on the deck to go up shallow? I mean, are you talking uh, square bills and jerk baits and uh, spinner baits and maybe a jig to flip, or are you doing something different? Uh, I'll have a jig on to flip, a booyah uh, jig. I've got, I'll have got i probably have two different size um, uh, booyah hard, hard knockers on in some type of crawdad or red pattern. I'll probably have a quarter ounce, and I'll either have a half or three quarter ounce. Um, uh, I'll have a cheddar bait on the on the front deck, and uh, I might throw a jerk bait or something like that early to try to you know when it's still colder and try to get a few fish in the boat before I you know start covering some shallower water. Okay, okay, and so tell us why are those fish shallow this time on uh, on Hamilton this time of year? Are they getting ready to stage? They're up there already thinking about the spawn. Or are they just relating to the to the maybe warmer water with the chunk rock and the bluff walls or the dirty water like what's going on there i'm not sure i have a real good answer for that but i know it's it, uh, you know i've been told this before i've really started fishing hamilton in the last four or five years uh, a lot and i've always been told you can fish uh, hamilton shallow all year or you can fish it deep all year so you can kind of tailor it to what you do um and again i don't i don't fish deep very often so i've enjoyed being able to go in the winter and stay and that you know, 10 foot or less, you know, uh, water column. And uh, why that happens, I'm not sure I know the answer to that. You know, tons of docks. If you're not familiar with Hamilton, there's docks everywhere. Lots of rust that docks. people put out. Yes. So there, are, there's plenty of cover shallow uh, to be able to fish shallow. So I assume that's probably, you know, one of the main things that, that keeps a lot of fish shallow. Okay. But there's there's huge schools of fish deep too. Um, you, can, you know, I know some guys this winter that did really well uh, watching those fish on live scope, staying on deep river channels, and you know catching them on jigs and a rigs. So um, that's definitely you know a player too. And probably a lot of stripers mixed in. There are there are a lot of a lot of stripers. So every now and then somebody uh, posts a picture of a thirty pound striper they caught while they were while they were bass fishing. Yeah, unbelievable, the striper population. But so, well, that's really cool. So are you a shallow water angler that likes to just burn the bank and cover a lot of water and just run into the bites that you get? Or talk to us like last year, like how many bites were you getting and how many keepers did you catch? Last year, I thought it was going to really set up well because of how dirty the water was for me. Um, and I'd had a really good winter leading up to that tournament. Uh, I caught a couple of decent fish that put me in the money range, um, but uh, I only caught, I want to say I caught six fish that day. I did not catch a lot of fish. It was a cold day, and, uh, you know, I didn't catch a, a ton of fish that day. Um, you know, I fished uh, the BF two-day BFL that was there in, uh, uh, I believe it was September of this year, and uh, ended up winning that tournament, but... I, you know, every one of those fish was a topwater fish or just under the surface fish. So, um, and then, you know, I know Spencer, uh, Sheffield finished second in that tournament. He's fishing offshore deeper, you know, thing. So it's really, it's really unique that both things can really come into play. So I think you can, you know, I don't think if you're a shallow fisherman, you have to go to this tournament and fish deep, or if you're a deep fisherman, you don't have to come to this tournament and fish shallow. You can do what you do and, I think have a chance to to do well. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So well, let's uh, let's just kind of backtrack. You know, last year to this year. You know, last year when you left the dock, how many rods did you have on the deck? And do you think you're going to have the same baits and tactics this year, even though the water's a little clearer? Yeah, I might change colors up a little bit more instead of the you know the bright reds or bright uh, black and blue. You know, maybe more of the you know green pumpkin type colors or more okay. you know, natural translucent type colors i haven't seen the lake myself i haven't been there in a couple of weeks but uh talked to a lot of guys this weekend we had a tournament at degray this weekend and everybody was just commenting on how clear the water was on hamilton so i think you know they're trying to keep it at that five foot and so they run they're constantly running water through there from washita and that you know the bottom end of washita is clear and so it's just running that clear water you know through the lake and so i think that's that's why it's so clear no, no, uh, no rain forecast this week. So, you know, that's not going to change. 
Fantastic. So, well, last couple of questions. Um, when you're fishing shallow like that on, on Lake Hamilton, uh, last year there was a lot dirtier water. You seems like you have a pretty good idea you're going to go shallow again. Are you catching spotted bass or are you catching largemouth? Uh, more largemouth than spotted bass. Every now and then I'll catch a spotted bass, but uh, uh, more more so largemouth than anything. Okay. And, I mean, is the bait window, are you catching them in the morning? Or is it like an all-day affair or – um, it seems to me that there's a good bite the first hour to two hours, like an early morning bite, even though it's winter. Um, and then it kind of tails off for a little while and then it seems to, uh, pick back up again after lunch. So that's kind of been the trend, uh, this winter. So, uh, we'll see if, if that holds true, but, uh, regardless of how cold it is or what's going on, it seems like there's always, you know, an early bite, uh, over there in the winter time. Correct. Correct. So, well, let's change gears a little bit. You gave us a lot of information. What about as a co-angler? You know, the, the Arkansas co-anglers, there's a lot of finesse tactics that they can imply. They can have to with the clear water uh, that happens in Arkansas. So if you were a co-angler in this event, let's say you're taking just two rods uh, and a little bitty tackle bag, um, what would you take? And I'm definitely going to take a jig head worm. I fished as a co-angler when I first started at uh, Mr. Bass of Arkansas tournaments. And, uh, you know, that was something I – seemed like I caught a fish on almost every tournament. So regardless of what the guy in front's doing, you know, you can throw a jig head worm out in deep water, catch suspended fish. You can throw a jig head worm next to a dock, a brush pile. And that's just, you know, most of the boaters probably aren't, you know, throwing that a whole lot. So they're trying to, you know, entice the bigger fish with reaction baits and things. And so to me, that's always a better option for a co-angler is to do something more finesse behind you know, behind the boater, whether it's a jig or worm or Cinco, something like that, finesse jig. Uh, I'm going to want to finesse something behind them that they missed. Um, one of the things I also do, also, I always pay real close attention to the cast that the guy in the front of the boat made. You know, I'm not going to make that exact same cast, even though, you know, they're going to cast at, at exactly at the target. You know, if it's a brush pile dock, you might throw just a little left or right of that. So um, you're not going to be in as much of a target rich environment, but you're going to be throwing, uh, you're going to be throwing somewhere where they hadn't already seen a lure. Um, so that's one thing I do. If I had to put another bait on, it'd probably be either a quarter or half ounce, uh, uh, trap booyah hard knocker or something, you know, something like that. Okay. 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 So, well, Chris, you've given a lot of information. We really, really appreciate it. We want to give you this final moment to thank any of your friends, your family, sponsors that help you, anybody in the state of Arkansas, local tackle shops, anything like that. Now's the time to uh, go ahead and just, we're going to turn it over to you. Okay. Appreciate that. Uh, you know, I've got, I've got a sponsor through uh, uh, Pratco Lures and LureNet. They've always uh, taken care of me. Dustin Elder uh, with that group has been, uh, uh, a big, uh, help for me the last few years. So I appreciate that. Uh, obviously appreciate my family. Let me go out and do this each weekend. They, uh, they, uh, support that and, uh, certainly appreciate that. You know, I've got, I've got tons of fishing friends. I couldn't begin to, to thank all of them, but it's, uh, you know, fishing these tournaments and being able to hang out with them and, uh, you know, talk about fishing, hang out, go eat, all those things. Those are, those are, uh, you know, as important and as uh, fun for me as fishing the tournaments. So uh, a lot of great guys around Arkansas and uh, really, really good fishermen. So it's uh, it's nice to be, you know, in the middle of them. Camaraderie goes a long ways as, as well as friendship. And, you know, honestly, for all the listeners out there, that's what fishing is for. The tournaments are great. The brand new bass boats are awesome. Going 80s, way too dangerous. Having $25,000 with electronics in the front of the boat, that's okay if you know how to use it. But at the end of the day, this is what fishing is for, and it holds no prejudice. It holds no sexism. And honestly, I'm going to be the first advocate to tell two things. Number one, more people need to get out in the outdoors and experience what God created for us. And number two, for all the parents out there that are listening, if your kid's interested in going fishing, make sure you introduce it to them because they won't have any money to do anything else that will get them in trouble, I promise you. So, <laughs> that's right. Hey, that's the BFLs is a great place to start. You know, start out fishing, start out tournament fishing where you don't have to have a boat. You don't have to have a lot of money. You can pay an entry fee and get in the back of the boat with somebody that's been doing this for a long time. And it's a, it's a really good way to learn. That's a fact. And by the end of the day, um, usually guys are friends, lifelong friends. I mean, some of the, uh, being a co-angler myself, some of my greatest friends out there have come from just that random draw at a BFL event. Right. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. So, well, Chris, we appreciate you joining us in Revital Outdoors. We wish you the best of luck this year in what you're fishing. Um, we hope to talk to you again soon because that means you're having a very successful 2022 uh, tournament campaign. And uh, we just wish you all the best and uh, look forward to seeing your success on Lake Hamilton this year in the BFL Archie Division. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Chris. So from all of us at Revital Outdoors, I'm Theron Asbury. Thank you for tuning in to another exciting podcast. Be safe out there. God bless, and we will talk to you soon.